to it. Shannon Sharp, what's up, brother? Yo, How you doing? What up? Chris, what's going on? Detroit, what it is, man. Yo, <laughs> yo. Thanks for joining us, brother. We yes. know you got a busy schedule, so we appreciate it. Let, let's get right to it. Um, you saw the Houston Texans hire Lovey Smith. Yes. Look, we're happy to see another African-American coach, obviously. But it just feels like they're going to put Josh McCown on the staff. <laughs> obviously, you know, Lovey's now is his yep. third time around. But did, does this feel like – a just sham. Some, yeah, yeah. That they're do, you know, in a couple of years he'll be fired and, and McCown will take the, over. They wanted to hire Josh McCown so bad, but the NFL said, Ain't no way we're gonna allow you to hire a high school coach that doesn't have that doesn't call plays for his son's team and with all these qualified candidates, NFL, black, white, Latino, whatever the case may be. And then somehow hold on. Why Lovey Smith can't learn his own staff? How does Josh McCown right. get put on Lovey Smith's right. staff? Shannon, so this, we, a guy, saw, this is a guy who went to the Super Bowl, and, and, and they make him take Josh McCown? Of course. Because, because here's the thing, though, Rob. We got to get him some coaching experience. So now if he's on the staff, we can yep. say, okay, he's qualified to be a head coach. Whereas before, because we had never seen a guy become an NFL head coach coaching high school football. Now, maybe they take one and they put him on the staff. He's an assistant. Maybe he's a position coach. But to be a head coach with no experience? Nah, we've never seen that. So this, we, we see what they're doing. We, this is what they do in Houston. We, look, we saw it before with Romeo Cornell. When Bill O'Brien right. demoted Romeo Cornell from defensive coordinator, put the linebacker coach, which was Mike Brable, because it would look better yep. if he were to audition for a head coaching job being the D.C. Okay. He becomes D.C., gets the job at Tennessee. They re-promote Romeo Cornell once he leaves, and he becomes defensive coordinator again. So I'm not surprised these are the antics that they use at Houston. Hey, hey Shannon, I, I wrote a column, and Chris and I have talked about it too, uh, and Tiki Barber, I don't know, I'm sure you've seen his comments, uh, where he was defending the Mara family and, and their – history or whatever, and, and, and I look at this, Shannon, and say this is part of the problem because every time that, uh, you know, some of these white owners get caught up or whatever, these guys come running out to, yeah, they do. Save, to save the day and say, oh, no, here, the, the Maras <laughs> are great people. They treat me right, and what right. are you talking about? The Giants have had five assistant black coaches in 97 years. And and right. that's what we're talking about. And and I even I even said that Tony Dungy did it too with John Gruden, where he apologized basically for him, said, "Hey, let's just move on." And then Bob somebody did moved. it with Bob McNair. Am I with right? Bob McNair said the inmates are running. Yes, but see, that's what they do. You got to find someone with a pristine, a number with a good image, and have them. Uh, you know, I got and they go support it. So look, this is what I tell you know, guys, Chris, Rob. We've all been around other professional athletes and entertainers. When people ask me, what is such and such like? I say, he cool with me. I can't speak to how he's going to be with you. Right, I'm saying right. such and such is cool with me. He, she is cool with me. Now, you might have a totally different experience. Right. Because someone treat me good, I'm not going to put my whole reputation on someone because of how they treated me. Because right. might, you might have a totally different experience. No, nah, that, that's the truth. That's the truth. So, Shannon, what, what do you think – is, I mean, it's the million-dollar question, so I don't expect you to have all the answers. But what do you think is an answer that the NFL could do to just get more fairness in terms of hiring, you know, black coaches? Uh, Chris, let me ask you a question. Who are you going to allow to come in your house and tell your wife what to cook in your kitchen? <laughs> nah, I hear you. What NFL, <laughs> what NFL owner that paid $1 billion, $2 billion, $3, $4 billion for a franchise is going to allow someone that's outside to tell them who or who they should hire. Right. It's just not going to work. You're going to have to get – look, you're going to ho- hopefully uh, – see, the thing is with the NFL, and, and I might get in trouble for saying this, but I think the NFL is more concerned about looking racist as opposed to being because it's the, the, the mere mention. They see the practices, what's going on. They know what's going on. Right. But no, I don't no. know how – and I believe Roger Goodell – Wants to try, wants to have a more inclusive. He wants the NFL to be more representative because you got seventy-one percent of the players that are African American, 
and I think they've done a great job of hiring more minorities in the league office. But Roger Goodell doesn't run the NFL. The 32 right. owners run the he NFL. He works for the owners. They tell him what to do. Right. Now, now Shannon. So I don't I, really know what they can do. I really don't know. I would like to see the NFL for us to have guys that are, you know, that, that get an opportunity. Like, you know, I would like to see a black coach do what Josh McDaniel did and be able to get a job. Yeah. Have a job. They're about to introduce you at the press conference. You send them an email or a fax. They nah, I'm going to stay where I'm at and get another job. And, you and think not, that could happen? And not only that, no Shannon, way. he got he got fired in Denver for cheating. Exactly. Hey, thank you. Yep. Thank you. But you see what they what did Josh McDaniels do? He got the job and he brought his general manager. Brian and, Left we <laughs> try to do the same thing at Jacksonville. They say, nah, you take Trent Balky or you're not gonna get right. the job. He said, Well, I'll stay where I am. You right. see what they do is that they bring their guys on. So now I'm insulated. We got two like minds that think alike. John Gruden did the same thing with Mike Mayock. Yep. So but at the end of the day, this is what it comes down to, guys. You can hire all the blacks you want. There's a reason why Mike Tomlin has been at Pittsburgh for 15 years. He's had a, one quarterback for 15 years. If you do not have a quarterback, black, white, red, brown, you're not going to last long. Now, if you're white, you're probably going to get an opportunity to last longer, but it's going to end, and it's going to end bad. Now, let me ask you, is there any way, and I know the power and, and, and financial structure – of players in the NFL is so splintered that the majority of players aren't the big-time players making big money. It's the guys who, who Shannon, might play three and a half years and, and have yeah. to get every dime. Am I right? right? And they can't afford to fight or sit out a season because they might not ever get back in the league. And so right. – Right where where we saw in the in the NBA when Donald Sterling was exposed, they went and said, "We're not playing the playoffs. We won't play a game in the playoffs," and they got him removed ASAP. Right. The players don't have the power in the NFL, or or do they, to make something happen? Because I believe the only way you can change things, Shannon, has to come from the players. Because you just said it, the owners aren't going to buy into anything unless, unless they're, they're forced, forced forced to do it. Right. You're absolutely right. But let me hear the thing. The players will not unite together in order to stand behind each other to get guaranteed contracts. Oh, you're right. So you think that you think they're gonna, you think they're gonna that, stand right? behind somebody that's gonna a, a, a coach or, or black uh, to have more black coaches? They, they won't would, say, look, thank you. They, they would they wouldn't stand behind Colin Kaepernick. Right. No, 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 no. I, I mean, and that's why they don't have guaranteed contracts. That's why basketball players have guaranteed contracts. That's why baseball say we're going to shut it down. You ain't playing no World Series. Yep. Right, right, you right. Keep, when you you got to think in terms of like that. If you were to shut it down and say we're not playing the Super Bowl until you come and we want some guaranteed money. Yep. We play the game, but, you know, you give them an extra $100,000 and you say, you know what, instead of having 13 practice practices, you'll have 10 and you'll have a couple of days, you know, you can't go back to back, you know. They bargain for petty privilege. You right. can smoke. Like you can smoke weed. Right. You know what I right. mean? Like that's what they're bargaining right. for. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When you look at Roger Goodell, Roger Goodell said, "I wanted lifetime medical." You think the players talk about lifetime medical? Right. Roger right. Goodell said, "I want." All you got to do look at when they when when executives when they negotiate their contract. That's how players should negotiate. Yes. That's how we should negotiate our contract. You see what they bargain for? They don't bargain for an extra day off. They don't bargain. They don't right. bargain for petty stuff. They bargain for things that they know is going to have a long-term lasting effect on their lives, not an extra practice. We are joined by Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp. Shannon, before you go, here's a football question for you. If Matt Stafford wins this game on Sunday, is he a Hall of Famer? Do you want him? Is he in your club? <laughs> Man, Shannon, you, know what? you better you better answer right because I'm gonna be mad at you if you don't. <laughs> Rob, Rob, here's the thing. By the time he's done, his numbers, he has an outside chance to catch Brady. So if he's the all-time leading passer and he has 450 touchdowns and a Super Bowl with an MVP, how do you leave him out? Yeah, I, I do. I, I think he needs to keep playing. Like, if he retired after the game, 
but that he only probably 30, not. He's only 34. But Chef, right, right. so four you, more yes. years, yeah, highly productive years, even if they don't win another one, then it's a yeah. great but, case. Because you're right, he's going to be top five. No, we've already said his numbers. These, he's had big yeah. numbers. A lot of them are stat pat for numbers. But I'll say this, Shannon. He was supposed to be Joe Burrow, a first overall pick that changed the franchise and changed the culture. Joe Burrow did it in two years. He never did it in, in 12 years in Detroit. That's what yeah, he was supposed and he, to be. And, and he had Megatron. Yeah, and right. he had Indomitian Sue right. and Nick Fairley, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. But That's you're not our... going to remember that, Rob. Uh, Rob, five years from now. No, he, I know. He, he, right. he's not, people are not going to even remember that he actually played in Detroit. Yep. All they're going to remember is that his last, his last six or seven years, eight years was in in, in, in L.A., and that's what teams, that's what people are going to remember. Right, no doubt. All right, that's our man Shannon Sharp. Thanks, we Shannon. appreciate you, brother. Check him out tomorrow morning on Undisputed with Skip and Shannon on FS1. Thanks, brother. Thank you. All right, bro, have a good one, guys. Yep.